We'll get Austin in the house. Good to see you again. How you doing, sir? Hope you're doing well. Yes, sir. So we're talking Austin Cole Train for Northern Guilford. We've had Austin as a guest with us here before. And what about the excitement? Is it kind of building up now for the uh, big game tomorrow night and the playoffs begin again? Yes, sir. It's building up. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. What is going to be different about this year than the past? You guys approaching this any differently this year? Or is it the same approach? Uh, it's pretty much the same approach. Um, just taking one game at a time and um, playing our playing our hardest and we'll see what happens from there. What do you do to get motivated because you're facing a team that you beat earlier 41-0? Um, we just just face it like, like it's any other game. Just This is the first step to win another state championship and we just got to go out there and take care of business. You guys have had some wild first round games the past couple of years too. Those Asheboro games a couple of times. Those are just completely blowouts. Is that a good thing to blow a team out like that the first game or is it better to have a little more competition? Is it, does it even matter? Um, I don't really think it matters because um, it's just game by game. Just just seeing what we can do. What do you know about Eastern Guilford? We're going to ask you in a second who's the face of your franchise. Who's the face of their franchise? Who's the uh, face of this Eastern Guilford team you guys look at? Uh, I'm not really good with names, but um, they got some good players over there, and they play hard, too. And we they know they've got the a good game. kicker, because I was talking to Dennis White about that earlier, about that kid, Caleb Stanley, now the 42 yarder a couple weeks ago. So we know oh, they got okay. And you're in the kicking department, too. You know how that yes, works. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I noticed your stats say two field goals and about just a ton of point after, point after touchdown kicks this year. Yes, sir. How about winning that uh, Guilford County, Bob Sawyer, Guilford County High School Player of the Week a few years That was pretty cool. I like that a lot. The thing I asked about the face of the franchise, where I got that idea to talk about that tonight, I saw a guy the other day, Tim Rich, said it sprinkled oil change on uh, East Market Street. Your dad went to school with Tim Rich. I okay. to Tim, he said he was driving down the road, hitting that 85, going toward Burlington, down near uh, Cox Street. It looked up, there was a video board there, video, yeah. I call them video scoreboards, video billboards. What do you think about scoreboards? This is a billboard. He looked up on that billboard, and there was like Austin. And Cold Train's face, a whole video. Yeah, the that, that, that was awesome. How does that um, feel? That's got to be crazy. You're in high school. Yeah. You know, you're not, the, not the big school, but the big college or pro game. You're right there on the highway. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, one of the guys in the Rotary Club, he was, um, he owns that place. Okay. So he was like, um, do you mind if I get a picture of you and we're going to put it on our billboard because we'd like to that's represent the stuff. athletes. So that's I was like, stuff. that'd be awesome. We can do Are they doing that with every player every week? Or just, I think so. That's I a good thing so. to do. Yes, sir. Good thing to do. So tell us more about Eastern Guilford. Look at the defense, Eastern Guilford's defense, how tough are these guys? What do you see? Uh, they're tough. Um, they play really, really hard. They fly to the ball. Um, they have some pretty good speed on them out there, and they have really good athletes. The athletes are great. Very athletic team. They are athletic. How about you look at this now? You guys walk around these days, and somebody comes up. Maybe they're not. Somebody comes up being a smart aleck. I can understand maybe your response. Somebody comes up just kind of out of the blue. So Northern Guilford, you guys won a couple of state championships, maybe three state titles. Yeah. Ask, what's your record? What do you tell them? Uh, I tell them eleven and zero. I, I wondered about that. I wondered. About I tell them that. eleven okay. and zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. The two forfeits. Say, I told somebody earlier during the year just kind of take a spin off that forfeit because of the loss. I said sometimes it's good for a team to get a loss. Sometimes it makes the team better when they lose a game. You guys didn't lose one in reality because it was just a forfeit. It was a forfeit loss. But, I mean, you did get the loss. Do you think in some ways that might have made you guys better down the road? Uh, I think it kind of brought us together. Mm -hmm. um, kind of bonded together a little bit better. And... Um, so I think I think it made us more of like a family. And did you guys come together like the seniors talked about it, or just as a whole team you talked about it? Yeah, we did. Um, we had a little senior meeting after practice one day, and we said um, this is what they've gave, uh, given us, and there's nothing we can do about it as players. Um, let's just don't lose one on the field. Just uh, try our best to stay undefeated on the field. Can you look at the numbers? I was trying to add them up today. My math is okay, but I'm just trying to remember back when you guys played two years ago, you lost the first game to Page, won the one, I think, 14 and won 15 last year, 29-11, you would have had one this year. So it'd be about 40 straight wins. It's, it's getting close. It's getting close. If not, over 40 already. Got to feel good about that. How about this new kid, C.J. Freeman? We'll just talk about him briefly, and we're going to get a few questions in for you and let your other teammates get in. What about C.J. Freeman? What has he done and um, meant to the team this year? C.J., he's, he's doing well this year. Um, he came with us tonight. Um, he's running the ball really well for a sophomore, and I, I, um, he's doing good. I like him a lot. Is he liking it? Because I read one of his uh, Twitter 
codes or responses. I just all about Twitter. But one of those Twitter things around the year was just kind of a little thing I read. Just just a kid trying to make it, trying to get along. He get is. To. Yeah, he's um he's pretty humble. I like it. Yeah, I like and, that too. That's but he's thing. he's doing well. He's running the ball real hard, and he's doing what he's got to do. You look at being a captain. What does it mean to be a captain of this team? I noticed your roster there because I was trying to check out some of the guys' names just to double check on some other things too. But look at the roster. You got about five captains, maybe five of you guys here tonight. What does it mean to be one of the leaders on the captains? Oh, it's, it's great. Um, I like being a leader. I'm not really much of a vocal leader. But, you could be though, because you talk well. Uh, <laughs> but I, I try guess your to. Actions speak pretty well for themselves too. Yes, sir. I like to. Um, I like to go out there and take care of business and try to lead by lead by example, and not so much as words. Do you go up before the game and uh, hit people, bump people, knock each other around? No, I don't. I don't do it's any of like that. It'd be better. Maybe just an assessment. It's gonna be better. Maybe to save your energy and put that save that for the other team. Yeah, when the team's in the huddle getting hype and everything, I kind of stand towards the bag and just. <laughs> <laughs> let them do their thing, let them get hype. I just I just kinda relax a little bit. Talking about uh, Northern Guilford, who was your mentor? You mentioned it before when you talked to us early part of the year. Who was your mentor coming through Northern Guilford? Um, I've had a bunch of them. Yeah, um, okay. Alan Hart, he, he's, he's been a, a great guy. mentor. Yeah, yeah, I like Alan a lot. Um, he, like I said the last time, he's the one that told me to I need to be back on the football field after I quit That's the right. first time. You told us about that a few um, weeks ago, yeah. Then Daniel Downing, of course, he's been a great mentor uh, to me. And um, Rocco, he took me under his wing, too. So it's, it's been a bunch of different guys that, that have looked out for me. How about the, with Coach Roscoe? What part of Coach Roscoe saves with his team now? You guys are still together. He was a big part of what you guys did. What part of him stays with you guys? Um, I think the, the pregame mindset. Um, he, he really focused in on being um, mentally focused for each game. And I feel like that stuck around. What we liked about him was we called it Johnny Roscoe football. It was like when you guys, right before the half, you guys be uh, trying to get that ball back one more time before halftime to throw that knockout punch right before the half ends, yes, first sir. half, yes, sir. just to make the statement, we've got this game, we get that extra touchdown, we're trying to get ready to put this thing on ice later. I've always liked his last minute or several last second approach to the game. Yes, sir. Um, this year we haven't really done that as much, but um, we still we still try to get the ball as much as we can. Uh, our defense is doing a great job um, handling the offense, the great field position. You guys got off to a slow start a couple of weeks ago. I think it might have been against maybe McMichael, who not won a game all year yes. long. It was about a six nothing game at halftime. Slow yeah, start. That, what happened there? What happened at halftime to turn that one around? Um, I don't think we were me like as mentally focused as we should have been. We kind of, I mean, everybody's around school saying, oh, they're um, they haven't won a game, so it was, it was kind of hard to get focused for that game. But um, at halftime, we all got together and coach chewed on us a little bit, and um, seniors got together and like spoke to the team a little bit and said we're not losing on our senior night yeah and so, so that was a home game then it was a home game wow. it, was our, it was our senior night that's even tougher be down to, to, against the team that hasn't won a game all year it's a team coached by one of your former assistant coaches yes sir wow that's tough but you put it together yes, who do you say is the face of this northern Guilford franchise got a franchise being a team over the years and you might want to leave out this year whatever over the course of time who's the face of this northern Guilford team um it's got to be coach roscoe all right good. coach roscoe's got to be the face of the franchise because you either love Coach Roscoe or you hate him. It's just it's you either you either gotta love him or you hate him. Uh, I know everybody that played for him loves him. No doubt about that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got Eastern Guilford tomorrow night. Down the road, you may end up with some teams that kind of pop up on the radar, possibly even Crest, but you wouldn't play them in the championship. You would play them in the uh, Western Championship instead of the state championship. What yes, about, sir. What about them down the road? Some of the teams down the road. Don't talk too much about them now because you got tomorrow night's game most important. What about these teams you may be seeing down the road? Because you will, if things hold true to form, you would uh, bounce in weeks one and two at home, then you'd have to bounce to the road after that. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know. We just take it one game at a time, but yeah, we played Crest in a scrimmage this year. They were very good this year also. Um, they always have a great program and um, of course the other teams we got to play on the, like, on the way to get there, they also have great programs too, so we'll just take it one game at a time. I was asking about Eastern Guilford earlier. Eastern Guilford now, are they a threat to the Nighthawk dynasty? Are we talking about the Duck dynasty, which I've never seen. It sounds pretty neat though. Neat thing yeah. to say the Duck dynasty, but the Hawk dynasty. Eastern Guilford, are they a threat to the Hawk dynasty? Um, I hope not. Well, we're just going to go out on the field tomorrow night and take care of business and uh, hopefully we'll come out with a win. Everybody's got their own saying about
about their team. Uh, Dudley calls it Dudley football. And you, what is Dudley football? Well, the, the Northern Way, Northern football, uh, Nighthawk Nation. What Nighthawk is, Nation. What is it with Nighthawk Nation? What is Nighthawk Nation then? Um, Nighthawk Nation, this is the greatest students around. We always have a great turnout, great fans at our games, and um, they really back us very well. How about back to the ACC teams? Maybe ask this to you when you're here earlier, but I ask about it now. Uh, the four larger ACC teams in the state, those four large teams, Wake, North Carolina State, Duke, and you throw in East Carolina. Among all those, you can play for one. Which one do you play for? Uh, I mean, you can play with TJ. How about that? Which one do you play yeah, for? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one because I've always been a state fan. But um, I think it would be awesome to play with TJ again and mm -hmm. Daniel Downing and all them that are up there because we have a lot of friends that go to school at UNC. So I feel like that would so be So you could uh, probably too. sacrifice the state uh, connection to go play for North Carolina in those circumstances. Uh, I don't know. That would be really tough. That would be really tough. Well, you think about Northern Guilford football. Coach Thomas done a very good job bringing the team around this year, taking for Coach Roscoe. Say if one of your female teachers took over and she became the head coach there, who would the uh, female teacher at Northern Guilford be that could lead the team into the playoffs? Do you have one female teacher that could lead this football team? Um, well, Coach Thomas' wife teaches, so maybe she could do it. Mm. If there was a female teacher, it would. She should probably know enough about it, just hanging around him. Yeah, just hanging around him, being yeah. Mrs. Coach and everything. Oh, yeah, I feel the Mrs. Like, Mrs. Coach title is a good one, too. Yeah, I feel like she could. if anybody could do it, she could probably do it. So Mrs. Thomas would take over and lead the team. What class does she teach? She teaches sports marketing. Wow, good yes, connection sir. there, too, then. Yes, sir. You take that one? I do, I do. What do you guys study in these days? I know there's a whole wide, broad range of things to study, but uh, what do you guys study in there? Uh, sports marketing is just pretty much like different sports topics and like different types of like managing mm -hmm. like money and stuff once you get to like the NFL or the professional leagues and so, so we talk about, about like being that. like a sports agent too yeah sports agents and stuff like that who's the best player in Guilford County I know we're gonna have probably have a player of the year coming up soon among the Guilford County players with the exception of any northern Guilford players right now kind of look on the outside kind of take that whole thing in who do you think's the best player in Guilford County this year um, high school football Guilford County let's see I would have to say High Point Central's quarterback. He's been putting up some great numbers. Solid. That's He's been putting call. up some great numbers this year. But um, Jamel Mack. Jamel He's Mack. 3,500 yards, maybe total offense. He has a bunch. I've been following him on uh, Greensboro Sports. He's doing very well. They got a big game tonight too. First round of the playoffs. Yes, so sir. Jamel Mack will be the pick. You've got Jamel Mack. You've got Emmanuel Mosley, who gets a little bit of lead weight too because he plays offense and defense. Yes, sir. You got a guy like Rick Mack of Southwest. Record was not that good. Put up some pretty good numbers. Quite a few guys you can look at. Yes, sir. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. And uh, I think yourself, I think that helps your candidates to see if we kind of put the Austin Cole train for Guilford County Player of the Year uh, campaign together tonight. I think it helps yours because Mosley's got the offensive defense, quarterback defense back. I think it helps yours being the quarterback plus being the kicker too. Yes, sir. I hope so. Those extra points are key. I know the two field goals don't go quite as far, but you, in some cases you didn't need the field goals. Yes, sir. We've on, we've um, well actually we've only kicked three field goals this year, so I'm I'm three for three in the field goal area. So um, I don't know. I just kind of picked up kicking. I don't really know how. You told us one time it was you guys were kicking, I think, down at uh, down the highway at Bowie Street. You guys worked at out Campbell. at Campbell. Yeah. Yes, sir, on the way to playoffs. You were kicking around. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Freshman, freshman, sophomore year, we went to Campbell on our away, uh, our away games. So You guys would always stop there, there, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was just kind of like a – got out of school early about 12 o'clock at lunchtime, and we would go to Campbell, have a little walkthrough, and um, eat our pregame meal at Campbell. That's back when you guys were on the road almost for every game in the East. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Gotcha. How about a Carolina Panthers? Favorite player for them? Um, favorite player for Carolina Panthers? I would say I would say Cam Newton. Okay. I just like the way he plays the game, and um, I like how he has fun playing. Do you think he's improving? Showing improvement this year? He is improving. I, I think he is, and they're playing very well right now. What's a must-do thing for you on game day? One of those things you do every Friday on game day. Is there a particular thing you do each time, um, each game? Maybe before the game, get ready to go to school that day, some during the course of the day, but right before you take the field, any particular thing? Uh, I always wear my jersey to school, and we always eat um, pregame meals as a team. And, um, Coach Ross, I mean, uh, Coach Thomas brings in some um, some pregame meals, and so we all eat as a team. So I feel like that's pretty cool. Are you wearing your jersey? Is that something all the team does? Um, it's it's optional. Okay. It's some guys whoever, do, some guys don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, having one now. Uh, Excluding the forfeiture losses, about 40 games in a row. I think if I were in a jury, I'd do it every time, right? Yes, sir. I, I wear mine every Friday. 
I'm going to let you go. Good time tonight with you, Shane Trebuchet. Keep up the good work. Good looking at the playoffs. Thank see you. you guys in the state championship game again. Yes, I think this year you guys would be back in Winston Salem. Is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Back at Wake Forest. It's kind of I interesting hope to be there. Yeah, and who knows who you might be playing, but uh, you definitely got to go through the West this yes, year. Yes, sir. It's through the West this year. It's, it's going to be a little bit different, but same thing, just one game at a time. And you guys went through the West a long time ago. I think you weren't there yet, but I think back in the Keenan Allen days, you went through the West a few years ago, too. Okay, yeah. Got knocked out along the way. Yeah, they got Hard beat to believe round. Northern Guilford did not win a state title when Keenan Allen was That's there. That's true. That's true. Hmm. They had a great team that year. I was surprised. Yeah, I think Anson County came in and bumped them out.